Good morning, everyone. Morning, Don. Morning. Welcome. Um, we'll get started in a minute. Um, we um, I just had a little bit of technical difficulties, but um, we will get started shortly. So thank you for um, for bearing with us. Um, and it's good to see you all. Um, this is our third episode of Coffee and Conversation for this year because we've now gone to the quarterly option. Um, and it's really great to to have you with us. Um, as we start, um, Outdoors Queensland would like to respectfully acknowledge the traditional owners and custodians of the various lands where we gather across Queensland and beyond. Um, we see Laurie and um, David Chitty, who are from a little bit further south than some of us. But um, yeah, welcome everyone. Um, and we do acknowledge and pay respect to elders past, present and emerging. Um, and reflect on the important roles that Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples play in relation to the land, sky and waterways that are used for outdoor activities and have been used for countless generations. Um, I'm in Mianjin, or now known as Brisbane, on the land of the Jagera and Torrebal peoples. Uh, if you'd like to, you can pop in the chat the, um, the land that you're on um, across the country. Um, I also acknowledge um, the significant work that various Queensland government departments and ministers do um, in relation to outdoor activities, including Sport and Rec, who are within the Department of Tourism and Sport. Um, and we acknowledge the funding provided by the Queensland government that supports outdoor organisations and outdoor activities across the state, um, including the funding that pretty much lets Outdoors Queensland do what we do um, through the active industry-based fund grant that we receive. Um, all right, um, and we do have um, Joe O'Neill from Sport and Rec joining us today. And um, I think Michaela is gonna be joining us too, Joe, um, hopefully. Hi, Dom. Um, Michaela just seems to be having some problems um, logging in. So I'm just gonna see if I can help her, her with her issues and um so if you don't mind stalling for a minute sorry <laughs> oh, that's all right and, we've um, got plenty to talk about so once okay once we'll jump point, we can talk about the um the new active kit grant so yeah that's perfect cool. yeah. okay i'll call her offline and then yep. see if i can help her get in right on. thanks joe thank you Um, so as I said, this is our third episode of Coffee and Conversation for 2024. Um, Mark, our operations manager, is my co-host again today. And thanks again to Mark for his contributions. Um, a big welcome to all members of Outdoors Queensland and others who are joining us, um, including our interstate visitors. Um, recordings of these sessions um, are on um, our websites um, and on YouTube. And please feel free to ask questions and make comments as we go along. I just noticed Laurie popped a happy birthday to Mark in the comments there. Um, I will echo those sentiments. Happy birthday for last week, mate. No, you, you love it when I try to embarrass you. So, um, <laughs> um, and I also just wanted to flag too, you might see probably depends which way I look, but I've got a great big patch on my forehead today, um, which is a battle with the surgeon yesterday, removing a, a skin cancer from my head. Um, probably another reminder how important it is to get the regular skin checks, particularly those of us who spent a bit of time in the outdoors um, and probably particularly uh, those of us who've grown up in Queensland with our um, wonderful UV over the years uh, that possibly I may not have been as good at the slip, slop, slap, slide and seek shade as I possibly could have for some of my life. So um, yeah, I've learned that lesson the hard way. So I just wanted to flag that one. So um, yeah, if you see a patch on my forehead, that's, I'm not trying to be a pirate. It's actually med medical. So um, moving right along with our agenda, um, I do have the grant funding one there um, at the top. We'll come back around to that one, um, which is a new Sport and Rec um, uh, fund that's just launched this week, but we'll come back around to that. Um, quite a big list of things, but as I always say, if you've got anything you want to add to the agenda during the meeting, please speak up. 
And if you want to suggest any topics for discussion in future sessions, please let us know. So I'm always more than happy to, to um, hear from anyone. Um, and if you want to just add stuff through the chat as well, just let us know. So, yeah. So I'm going to skip past this first slide because that's the one for the um, grant funding. A couple of things that we've got coming up. Um, the 2024 North Queensland Mountain Bike Forum um, held in three weeks today up at James Cook Uni in Cairns um, with support from Blue Sky Trails, the Cairns Institute and FNQ Regional Organisation of Councils. So it's... Um, it's going to be held in the week of the Crankworks event, which is a really big mountain bike event in Cairns. Um, and we're actually holding it at the James Cook Uni at Smithfield, which is right next door to the event venue. Um, it's all about meeting and discussing the future of sustainable mountain biking. Um, we'll be talking about inclusion, strategy and policy and um, environmental sustainability. Um, and I guess the financial sustainability as well of uh, of mountain biking and what it means for for communities. Um, so registrations are open now, um, and um, we're really keen to have as many people as possible at, at that forum um, in a few weeks' time. So just wanted to flag that one for everyone. Um, pretty good speaker lineup on that one too. So uh, look forward to. Uh, that one, uh, Laurie has got a mountain bike forum at the end of the year. Um, I think it's in October, isn't it, Laurie? Yeah, uh, correct. Yeah, twenty fifth and twenty sixth of October down in Marimbula. Yeah. Gee, yeah. so last year you had the one at Lennox Head, which was almost in Queensland. Now you're going to almost Victoria, just to, yeah, <laughs> just sharing the love. <laughs> yeah, good work. Yeah, <laughs> there's so many lovely places in New South Wales. Some of them are almost good enough to be in Queensland. I've said before, Laurie. <laughs> So, I was waiting for the punchline on that because I thought you're not going there. With oh, I'm, I'm always nice to you guys, yeah, <laughs> except over the state of origin period, but that's all right. That's coming up. Um, yeah, so if anyone is interested in the Mountain Bike Forum, uh, if you want to have a chat about it, give us a call or um, have a look on our website. Um, there's plenty of good speakers in that agenda too on that Friday of the Crankworks event. So we look forward to seeing people there. Um, another one that we have, um, this is a good practice outdoors program. Um, we, we were fortunate to receive a grant from the Queensland government's active women and girls program. Um, and we're going to use this grant to roll out this new good practice outdoors project, which we're focusing on female leaders, um, whether in volunteer or paid roles. Um, Dawn, our office manager, is taking a lead role on the project and we're very busy preparing resources for the project, but we will open for registrations um, in the next little while. So really keen to see a great group of female leaders um, as our first intake in the Good Practice Outdoors program. It's going to be about um, probably familiarisation and utilisation of the um, adventure activity, Australian Adventure Activity Standard and Good Practice Guides. Um, this first group will be purely for female leaders and the whole idea of that is um, by upskilling, then having uh, more female leaders designing programs and um, making sure that the programs comply with the adventure activity standard, but also work for female participants. So that's the... the um, the point of that program and getting more women and girls um, active. So that's what we're looking at on that one. There'll be more information coming soon. So, and we're pretty keen to, to make that one a, a success too as we go along. So um, we'd love to have feedback on that one from, from the participants who are involved and from others who are interested in it, in what it could be. Um, the next slide, sorry if I'm ripping through too quickly. If there's any questions, please um, pop your hand up or, or sing out. So yeah, just let me know. Um, the Protect Beautiful Queensland Alliance. Um, so this is an alliance that Outdoors Queensland's joined. Um, so we're in that alliance alongside Pew Charitable Trusts, the Queensland Conservation Council, National Parks Association of Queensland, and Balkanu Cape York Development Corporation. Um, the goal of this alliance is for all Queenslanders to have better access to the beautiful nature that Queensland has in abundance. Um, 
the push with Protect Beautiful Queensland is to double Queensland's protected areas by 2030. And when we talk about protected areas, it's not just national parks. Um, it's, um, it's also private nature re refuges um, and other ways of protecting the, the landscape. So um, what we're trying to get to is, so there has been a commitment to double Queensland's protected areas by 2030. We want to see that that actually happens and that all um, that, that the land managers are well resourced to actually manage that land and ensure that um, the national parks and also the private protected areas are prioritised and um, funded so that we can make sure that people have access to those spaces where they can um, make a difference by getting active and also the conservation values of, of these wonderful places. So we're really happy to be part of that alliance um, and we'll we'll be working with those different organisations about what it means for Queensland to have as much as possible of Queensland protected um, and valued um, for its wonderful spaces that we have. Um, just saw Joe's comment. Michaela, you're with us now. Um, Dom, I'm sorry. Yeah. We're just having awful trouble. I am. Oh, great. Can you hear me? <laughs> We've got you, Michaela, I think. Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. Yeah, we've got you, Michaela. All right. I'll okay. dial back a couple of slides. It must be my internet. I'm so sorry. It's not great. It's a bit patchy. I'll dial back. I'll just introduce the um, the um, active kit. Um, so it's it's a new program um, that it's well, it's a program that's been around for a while. But it's the newest round of it's just launched this week um, on Wednesday. Um, Michaela is the acting manager of partnerships development and management at Sport and Rec. Um, and hopefully she'll be able to tell us more. Over to you, Michaela. Okay, um, I have some slides, Dom, um, mm -hmm. but it says that the host has disabled attendees from sharing screens. Okay. Um, excuse me, Dom, I've just emailed that through to you. Um, would you like me to email it through to Mark? Um, I could make Michaela a, hang on, I can just get it. That's all right. Yeah. All right. Okay. I'll leave uh, uh, excuse me, I've, uh, Dom, I've just made uh, Michaela a co-host. Okay. You should, better, you should better see your screen now. Thank you, mate. Perfect. Hopefully my internet holds up. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'll stop my share and you should be able to share now, Michaela. Okay. Can you see those active kit slides? No, not yet. Always seeing as a blank screen saying that you're screen sharing. Oh. No, there, there we go. We're in. No, we were in. Oh, I just, I just stopped it. I thought. <laughs> <laughs> it was there and then it disappeared. It was there. Okay. How was There we that? go. Now we've yep, got that's it. it. We're in. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. And so sorry for the delay, guys. Um, so yeah, as Dom mentioned, Active Kit Super Round just opened for expressions of interest on Wednesday. Um, so this really quick presentation is just a bit of an overview of the program um, for you guys, given this is a sort of new program um, that sort of opens it, the doors up for more than just our traditional sport and rec organisations. Um, so for those who don't know, Active Kit is our innovation fund here at the Department of Tourism Innovation. Uh, sorry, we're no longer innovation, we're just tourism and sport. So that's some background. Um, now I've lost my mouse and I can't change the slides. Here we go. Uh, okay, I just have a bit of an acknowledgement to country video. Um, so the point of Active Kit is just to kind of do things a little bit differently. So this is a really cool um, acknowledgement and welcome to country that um, the Department of Education has put together. I can't help but smile when I watch this one. So hopefully it's a bit of a feel good for you guys as well. MK, I'm, yeah. I'm just I'm just letting you know it, there's just a bit of a lag and I'm not sure what others are seeing, but I'm seeing your opening slide. Okay. 
Dom. The video is it, maybe too yeah, much. Okay. No worries. Um, Dom, Dom and Mark, I was just wondering, given Michaela's um, issues, is it possible for, for you to share her slide deck? Yeah, I'll have a quick look, Joe. Thank you. It just might uh, work better, MK. Okay. Um, Hold the phone. <laughs> I haven't got oh, that one, Joe. Oh, here I have. Yes, it's just gone through. Uh, We will get there. Okay. We've got it now. Is that one coming through? Yeah, I can see yes, it. Yeah. yeah. Right. Perfect. We'll just open up and play that. It's not playing for me, Michaela. We might have to. Skip. Okay, that's okay. We can just skip it. <laughs> okay, so um, to the program itself, um, the objective of Active Kit is to support innovative solutions within the active industry uh, to increase physical activity opportunities for Queenslanders and sort of contribute to that system wide capability um, improvements around sort of improving the way organizations look at innovation in the industry and their business and their operations. Um, so how Active Kit works is the program sets a challenge to industry to sort of come up with innovative ways, so products and services um, that sort of meet the challenge that's been set. So for the Active Kit Super Round, the challenge for this round is personalizing the experience for all. Um, so to drill that sort of down a level, it's about enabling inclusive, social and flexible and commitment free physical activity opportunities that help to create a positive mindset and encourage physical activity involvement for life. So in the past two rounds, if you're aware of the program, we had a bit more of a specific challenge that was set around target cohorts and minority groups, et cetera. Um, but given this round is a super round, we've sort of gone a bit broader to sort of open the, um, open the possibilities for different products and solutions that get Queenslanders moving. So as it mentions there, projects could be specifically related to physical activity delivery um, also of the systems and processes that sit behind enabling these opportunities for Queenslanders. So um, at, its, at its essence, it's pretty much about coming up with innovative ways to get more people um, moving more often and in ways that sort of suit their needs and how, how Queenslanders sort of want to be more physically active. Um, so if you jump to the next slide, Dom. Um, so under Active Kit, we support both technology and te non-technology based solutions. So um, there's been some feedback that people had only thought that you could apply for technology based solutions, but that's not the case. Um, in terms of non-technology based, it's just about thinking about different ways to deliver physical activity um, that you haven't done in the past. Um, so for the super round, this time around, we have are in sort of an taking an opportunity to invest in those proof of concept ideas. So your solution can either be proof of concept or the terminology is minimum viable product and beyond. So on the next slide, I do have some definitions that may sort of provide a little bit more context for what that means for you. Um, so yeah, proof of concept idea is pretty much the idea you have before it becomes a reality. So where I'm looking to sort of invest in this space, sort of get organizations that haven't traditionally been working in this space and may not have an innovative idea already to go. Um, but essentially we're looking to, yeah, sort of support you in building out that idea to sort of demonstrate that it could be successful in the long term. Um, and then with minimum viable product, the easiest way to explain it is you actually have something tangible and you're ready to roll it out um, and sort of test it with potential customers and new markets. Um, so the funding available for the super round, there's a total funding of $3.3 million available and up for grabs um, and how it works with the proof of concept and minimum viable products. There's sort of three tiers of funding. So you can apply for one tier, um, but not all. So 
in terms of proof of concept, because it's a bit harder to sort of like, it's a bit risky that it may not actually pay off, but we're willing to take that risk to sort of get industry thinking in this way. Um, but with tier one for proof of concept, that funding amount is capped at $50,000. Um, with Active Kit, there is an organization's contribution um, required. So it's sort of like our way of saying, you care about it, we care about it, so let's make it happen together. <clears throat> um, and so for tier one, it'll be 20% of the eligible project cost is what um, the organization will have to contribute. Um, and then in terms of minimum, minimum viable product and beyond, um, tier two will fund up to $100,000 with a 20% contribution. Um, and tier three is for those sort of bigger, chunkier um, projects, which, which will be $100,000 and $1 to $200,000 with a bit of a bigger contribution around 50% for these ones. Um, next slide. Uh, so in terms of organisational eligibility, there are sort of three um, sort of starting ones, which is that you're registered with an ABN, um, you're based and headquartered in Queensland. There is a bit of a caveat for our national sporting organisations um, un operating under governance structures. Um, and at the time of program close, you need to have met all obligations with projects currently funded by the department. Um, and have no debt owing as well. Um, in addition to those sort of core eligibility requirements, you have to be one of the following um, organisation types. So um, an active industry state level organisation or a peak uh, body um, funded under, oh, sorry, incorporated under the one of the following acts. Um, a national sporting organisation operating in Queensland a regional or statewide not-for-profit organisation. So that excludes those sort of regional sporting associations. So it's more thinking about those community-based organisations servicing um, parts of regions. Um, a local government, a Queensland tertiary or research institution and where, and where we may capture some of your, um, your organisations is start up in small to medium enterprises with no more than 50 full-time um, employees. If you have any questions about these eligibility um, criteria, I think I do have a slide that has an email address you can um, contact after the session today. Well, it's great that you've got the you know startups and small to medium enterprises on there as well, Mikado. I think that's a really good development of broadening it out a little bit for more people across yeah. the whole Yeah, industry. definitely. Yeah. Yeah. We kind of realised that... Um, this is our opportunity to sort of support those more non-traditional sport and rec and active industry organisations because we realise that there's probably some really great ideas out there that can translate into benefiting Queenslanders and how they sort of um, participate in physical activity. Yeah. Um, so I think I'm nearly coming to the end. Sorry for all the lags and delays. Um, here are some key dates for the Super Round. So this time around, we're sort of trialling a two-stage application process. Um, so as Dom mentioned that the EOI or expression of interest opened on Wednesday. Um, so we'll be seeking notice for the next three weeks with it closing on the 22nd of May. Um, and then invited organizations will um, receive correspondence from us um, to complete a second stage assessment. So um, there was some feedback that the application form for Active Kit was quite lengthy. So we've taken that on board um, and we're trying to make it easier for organizations to sort of come up with these ideas and put them forward to give everyone sort of a better chance to be funded. So, um, yeah, so EOI opened on Wednesday and it will close on the 22nd of May at 5 p.m. Like all advice from Sport and Rec, we recommend you don't leave it until the very last minute if you are interested in applying. Um, there'll be a, sort of an internal process to sort of uh, provide a list and invite those um, organisations to a second stage, which will um, open on the 12th of June. Um, and then this is a two year funding period. So um, there's the hope that we announce successful projects in August, which would then give you two years to August, 2026 to deliver your project. Um, I think that may be, I just wanna check, that might be my last slide. There's a couple more, but I think it's uh, just images, Mikhail. Oh yeah, so what they are is um, there's some previously funded projects under um, Active Kit. So it's kind of just going to be a bit of a way. If they don't play, I can definitely share them. They're on, they're on YouTube. 
Okay. Um, but they're just some sort of projects that we've funded and done a bit of a case study on that sort of ask them about where their idea came from and sort of talks to some of the participants um, through their programming. So it's just going to be a bit of a way to showcase what we've done. It may sort of help you get thinking about what pro um, what projects you could put forward for Active Kid. Um, but they are on YouTube, so we'll get the um, the links to Dom to send around to this. Yeah, group. if you send that around, we'll send that with our email that goes out to participants. Yep, so perfect. Okay. Cool. Yep. Okay. And you um, said it was... <laughs> Sorry, Excuse Michael. me, Dom and Michaela. I think I can actually play these for you now off my machine if that's oh. any help. Okay. Um, yeah. Just give me a second to share my screen with you now, then. Are you seeing now the dance for arthritis? Is that what I'm talking about? Come on, play the game. <laughs> Technology is our friend until it's not. <laughs> Absolutely. That's what the program's about, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. What a bad look. <laughs> oh, Are you getting audio as well? No, no, we don't have any sound. Uh, okay, well, in that case, there's not much point. Um, we will share these later, people. Sorry about that. It was a good, it was an attempt. You had a go, Mark. That's part of innovation as well. Yeah, Thanks, absolutely. Something it's like about that, doing yeah. things a little bit differently, <laughs> thinking outside the box. Yeah. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions from Michaela? No? All good. Um, thank you very much, Michaela. We do appreciate you um, persevering as well to tell us about it. I think it's one of these things we need to know about and have people put in their good ideas, uh, especially with, through that expression of interest process. I did notice in the guidelines there's um, the opportunity to do a short video to explain the idea as well, which is pretty cool. So uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And we sort of acknowledge that there wasn't a lot of lead in time to the program opening. So my advice for the video is it doesn't have to be super fancy, but we've just sort of found that people find it easier to talk about their projects than to write about them. So it's just a good opportunity to sort of, yeah, show us the passion behind the projects and the ideas that you have. So I would definitely recommend taking it off. So it also helps give us a better picture of the project as well. Yeah, great. Thanks, Michaela. Really appreciate it. And thanks for, um, for your time today. That's okay. I'm so sorry for all the delays and glitches. Oh, good. We got there. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. That's okay. All right. Yeah. Let me just uh, stop sharing that one and go back to my other slideshow. This is going to challenge me, isn't it? Coming soon, sorry. Oh, hang on, Mark. It was your share, wasn't it? You're sharing at the moment still. No, I've stopped sharing, Dom. I have. Okay. I'm trying to get my presentation back together. I will be with you. Just um, talk amongst yourselves. Here we go. Maybe we need a project that um, teaches people better skills on using Zoom or something. <laughs> <laughs> I think, is that showing now? Yes, it is. All right. Okay. We're there almost. Um, just have to get back to actually driving the presentation so I can move the presentation along. New beauty. All right. Thank you, Michaela. Really appreciate it. Um, a few things, um, some opportunities, uh, particularly for consultation. So the Queensland Mental Health and Wellbeing Strategy is open at the moment. Um, it's available for review. Health and Wellbeing Queensland are leading the development of that strategy with the Queensland Mental Health Commission. Um, there's an online survey which closes on the 13th of May. So um, they, they say on their website they want to hear from Queenslanders of all walks of life um, and they have make a point of saying everyone's perspective is important. They want to know what keeps people well and how we can prevent the onset of mental ill health. So 
really encourage people to to have a look at the the strategy and fill out that survey. The vision of their strategy is that all Queenslanders thrive through mental health and well-being. Um, so this is not about just about addressing mental ill health. It's actually about um, mental health and well-being as a um, understanding that they are. I went along to one of the consultation sessions they held, uh, which was at Ipswich um, towards the end of March. Um, and there's a couple of consultation sessions still remaining next week. One's um, aimed at the youth voice and the other one for First Nations people. So check out their, their web, web, web page there for details. Um, it is an important um, piece of work that's going on at the moment. Um, so we've got a couple of weeks to fill in that survey. Um, and have a look at the actual draft um, document. Um, and another opportunity, um, which is also through Health and Wellbeing Queensland, um, the they've got a survey um, to survey kids between six and seventeen years of age and their parents to 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 better understand attitudes towards food marketing. Um, so they describe this as a fun 10 to 15 minute interactive online survey for children to complete with the consent and support of their of their parents. Um, and that survey is open until the 12th of May. Um, I haven't done that survey because I'm not a child between six and 17, but I'm interested to see how you make a survey fun and interactive. Um, but yeah, I think hopefully it's a, it's a good thing. So um, that one's there as well. So. I uh, just wanted to flag that. Um, just saw Laurie's comment about proactive health. It's a good idea. Yeah. Um, and I just saw Dave Chitty had a comment in there about the change to the bomb severe weather warning system. Dave, did, um, we might, we'll come to that, mate, if you want to have a quick chat about that um, towards the end. Um, I've just got a couple more slides and then um, we might have a chat about that. So um, I wanted to flag the National Outdoor Education Conference. Um, so that's going to be held in Gippsland in Victoria in early December this year. Um, they've got the early bird tickets are actually on sale now. That says save the date on the screen, but it is actually early bird tickets are on sale. And I understand they finished on the 28th of June. Um, They've got um, the the Federation Uni campus is about two hours southeast of Melbourne, um, and they've organised coach services from the Tullamarine Airport um, for those of us who are flying in. So, um, which is really good because it means you don't everyone doesn't have to hire a car, um, and those flights are intended so the, the buses are intended to meet flights and make sure we get there on time um and they've also got accommodation options at the venue um you can camp um at the venue or there's accommodation in the university residency residences so um they said there's also going to be some off-site accommodation options but i'd imagine the um on-site ones will probably be the go-to place so um according to the website, is going to be inspiring keynote presenters, uh, over 30 exhibitors, um, and um, heaps of networking opportunities. So, yeah, it sounds like no X is always a good thing. So um, it looks like they're putting together a pretty good program for that one. So there's more info on the Outdoors uh, Victoria uh, webpage, um, which we've got there. So check that one out. Um, this one is relevant. Um, I didn't. I, was, I I didn't want everyone getting too overexcited about the thought of um, you know talking about legal stuff and law changes, but it is actually important. So um, the in the Queensland um, Associations Incorporation Act um, has is being changed. Um, so from the first of July this year. Incorporated associations have to disclose remuneration paid and any benefits given to their committee members, senior staff, and their relatives at the AGM. And they also have to 
follow the grievance procedure and model rules to resolve disputes. Um, so it is an important thing that you may need to update the constitution to say that you're doing these things, but you, you do need to make sure um, about the disclosures at the AGM. And if there are no, if there's no remuneration paid or benefits to committee members, you need to include a statement for the AGM about that from, from 1st of July onwards. So just wanted to flag it to ensure everyone was um, understood that there had been those changes. So I think it's an important one for people to understand. Um, so just wanted to flag that one. Um, and a couple more, the um, Queensland Accessible Events Guide. So this is a new Queensland government guide which has been developed um, in consultation with people with disability. It's about supporting event organisers to deliver accessible and inclusive events. Um, it's actually pretty good what the, what's on the website. There's a, the guide, um, a checklist and a video. Um, and it's about making sure we're doing things correctly. Um, but they also do highlight um, that this can help unlock an untapped market for accessible tourism, um, which could be worth millions of dollars. Um, so the guide is about all stages of event planning from the pre-event consultation and preparation right through to what venue you might use, how to promote and market it, um, et cetera, right through to having a welcoming environment. Um, so I think, um, this is an important piece of work that Department of Tourism and Sport have done. So I just wanted to highlight it um, as a as a really helpful um, resource that's out there. Um, and we'll certainly um, have it up on our website too, so people understand that one's out there. Um, all right. That's pretty much it from the agenda today. So the Protect Beautiful Queensland Alliance, our mountain bike forum up in um, Cairns, in a few weeks' time, obviously the active kit funding and the mental health and wellbeing strategy for comments. I just wanted to flag those ones, um, and also our all our regular resources, um, our website, um, e news, and our social media. Um, but Dave, did you want to speak about the um, the Bureau of Meteorology changes? Yes, okay. I just noticed uh, this week that uh, rather than include coastal stuff in the severe weather warning system they had. They've segregated it out and they're developing a uh, a separate uh, coastal hazards warning is what they're calling it, the bomb. And right. uh, I think two interesting things there. It, it, uh, it means that it provides some specific advice about tides, wave sizes and things for our coastal operator and to, you know, uh, recreational stakeholders. But m maybe we should also get have a look at what might be might what what could be added to it mm. benefit our um, coastal people. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, it's always good. I mean, it, the Bureau of Meteorology, the the information they have on their website and different on their app, it's quite amazing the depth of the information they make available. The the challenge is filtering through it all and understanding what you can access on there. And um, yeah, I think. It is amazing what they make available, and that's that's a big part of their job. But um, yeah, it's actually getting to the right resources for everyone. So yeah, thanks, Dave. That's um, that's really good to to know about that update. So we yeah. might need to look at uh, what we need to update in the adventure activity standards and uh, um, and the survey the severe weather guidance note yeah. as well. Um, yeah. yeah, just a good news thing uh, and something that. I'll probably share around. In uh, Mount Buffalo over the last few years, we've had one old defibrillator yeah, that Parks provided mm. um, and they were concerned about the growing age of visitors. So they approached me as the local operator and I approached the Chamber of Commerce in Bright and the Chamber of Commerce working with a local community bank, Bendigo Bank, bought three defibrillators to put up at Mount Buffalo, one at the camping ground. Yeah, I mean, in, in, in prime tourist locations, yeah? Yeah. Uh, last week, one of those defibs saved a guy's life. Wow. Yeah. Okay. And, you know, that's a good good news story, but it's also an opportunity perhaps for people working in specific locations with land managers and others 
to um, collaborate with local chambers of commerce who can often access funds that the rest of us might not and maybe some thinking about partnerships in a range of ways to provide safety systems like that to to areas that are needed without saying, oh, we don't have any money here. Yeah? Anyway, just an opportunity that that happened with us. It could be something that could be transferable. That's great. Yeah, it's, and I mean, it's those sort of stories are great to hear when, you know, just through a bit of um, probably conversations and collaboration and the direct result of someone having their life saved. That's amazing. Well done, mate. Yeah. It's, congratulations to all involved, I guess. And um, yeah, that's terrific. All right. Does anyone else have any topics you'd like to talk about? Tom, did you want me to cover the uh, migration strategy situation we're trying to navigate? Yeah, yeah, that'd be good, Laurie, if you don't mind. Yeah, yeah no worries. Um, for those that may may or may not know, uh, yesterday the federal government, Jobs and Skills Australia, announced their list of core skills that they want to see in the migration strategy. There was three categories. There was the confident on list, interesting terminology, but I'm confident on list, confident off list, which means they're not being considered, and then uh, an up for consultation list. Uh, disappointingly, even though we've been doing a lot of work in trying to get our um, federal government to realise the skill shortage in our sector, they included all of our uh, core list, core skills list in the do not consider or confident off list. So outdoor adventure guides, raft guides, you name it, anything that was in um, our core skill category was put in the do not consider for the migration strategy. So I think everyone heard me from Queensland when I screamed and uh, I have written to the minister, I've written to Human Ability, who's our representative for Sport and Rec, I've written to uh, Saxa, who's our representative for Tourism, um, and um, and singing from the rooftops, asking everyone if they wouldn't, um, if they've got 10 minutes, that's all it's going to take. They've given us a 10-day window, which is just pathetic, in trying to respond on the surveys for this. Um, so if you are categorised as a as an outdoor adventure guide, this is where we need you guys to jump in and do the survey, and you've got uh, until the 10th of May to do that. Um, so it's if you just search CSOL, um, Jobs and Skills Australia, it'll come up with the draft consultation page. I can stick it in the chat for you, Don, in a second. Yeah, thanks, um, And, uh, yeah, and if you if you don't belong to one of those uh, core skills, it doesn't give you any other option but to submit a letter. <laughs> so go into the submission side and uh, feel free to jump onto my blog on Outdoors New South Wales, copy, paste, whatever you like, and uh, submit on um, into there because unless we all jump up and down, we're still not going to be heard because we're a small fish with a very large issue uh, amongst a, a whirlpool of aged care teachers, <laughs> you name it, there's every industry suffering, but we've got the data to show our gaps are there and they should be supporting it. Yeah, and so that closes um, next week, end of next week. End of May, yeah, correct. Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. There you go, there's the link Thanks, in there. Sure. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> another one of these things that seems to be an issue that we've been talking about as far as having um, availability of skilled workers and enough training and everything else in Australia, but also being able to have people from overseas return to our industry. And it's, um, yeah, disappointing when, when that sort of, when, when it's not heard, isn't it? So, mm, yeah, thanks. So, yeah, reach out if anyone wants words. I can, I've got plenty of them. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Thank you very much. Does anyone else have any burning issues or comments? No? Um, feel free to um, follow us on social media as well. I should have mentioned that before. Um, um, we always love to see their, you know, our online footprint expand as well. So if you're not following us already, please feel free to do that on your social media platform of choice. Um, we're on, I think, all of them, most of them. Um, that's about it. So um, a big thank you for coming to everyone. Um, 
we're holding these sessions every three months now. So the next session will be the first Friday in August. So the um, Friday, the 2nd of August. A big thank you. Um, thanks to all Outdoors Queensland members, uh, volunteers and staff who con contribute to what we do. Um, so I'll just sign off with um, be kind to the planet, be kind to other people and be kind to yourselves. And uh, don't forget your skin checks as well. That's my addition for this session. So mm -hmm. thanks very much, everyone. And I hope you have a terrific uh, day and long weekend if you're in Queensland and you get the long weekend. So thanks all. And I'll see you soon. <laughs>